Good morning. I am Dr. Fani Krishna, Professor from the Department of Prosthodontics. Today I am here to give you a demonstration how to fabricate an uh, occlusal rim. So for which we require a few of the armamentarium. I will also show you what are the armamentarium we require. The first thing we always require is a master cast on which a, 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 a denture base has been already fabricated. After that we require a wax carver, a wax carver a wax spatula, a wax knife, hot plate, a chip lower and a scale along with it we also need a pencil to do some of the markings. So we also require two rubber bowls which have water in it and a bunsen burner. We require two wax sheets using which we use do we do a fabricate a occlusal rim. Before we start our fabrication of occlusal rim, we have to have some of the lines that are drawn onto your master cast which will help us to do a good occlusal rim. So these, these lines that are drawn, reference lines that are drawn on your master cast are based on the anatomical landmarks which you have studied earlier. So on which coming to the maxilla, initially we start with a midline drawing that will help that will that is used by the frenum that is on the cast. Once the midline is drawn, it is extended onto the posterior part of the cast that will help you to mark the midline on the cast and give you a good symmetrical occlusal rim. So after which we are marking our incisive papilla. The incisive papilla is drawn which will also determine you the positioning of your central incisors. Once the incisive papilla is drawn, we mark a horizontal line at the distal portion of the incisive papilla extending it onto the land areas of the cast as you see in this cast. We also coming to the posterior part, we also draw the tuberosity that again has been bisected with the line that is drawn on the center of the crust and which is extended onto the land area on both the sides as you can see on the cast. Coming to the mandibular. The same way as we did in it, as we drawn the lines on the maxillary cast, we also draw some of the reference lines on the mandibular cast. So the first thing, the labial frenum is marked and is extended onto the cast so that it will give us the center of the cast and bisect the cast into two things, as which I have already told you that we can have a symmetrical occlusal rim on both the sides. Coming to the posterior aspect. There is an anatomical landmark called retromolar pad which is marked on both the sides of the cast and this retromolar pad is divided into three equal halves as shown on the cast here and a line that is drawn onto the center of the crust of the ridge is extended onto the retromolar pad till the posterior part and make sure that this line is bisecting your retromolar pad into two equal halves. All these reference lines will help you give a good occlusal rim, a form of an occlusal rim as well. So I will also explain you how these reference lines are going to help you to fabricate an occlusal rim while in a process of fabricating the occlusal rim. So let's start doing the fabrication of an occlusal rim on the maxillary cast. So going ahead with your fabrication of the occlusal rim for the maxillary. So as I already told you, we also we we pre-required that a denture base is already fabricated on your master cast. So as you could see here, you could see some of the lines that have been exposed onto the land area as well. So here, the midline that is of the cast, the midline of the crust of the ridge, a line that is seen here for the marking of the canine. So for which an occlusal rim to be fabricated, we require a modeling wax sheet. The wax sheet is slowly run on the flame so that you remove this white paper from it, oil paper from it without getting sticked on the wax sheet on either of the sides. Once this is re removed, you take a wax knife and cut 3 fourth of your wax sheet.
take the three fourth of the wax sheet, soften it so slowly onto the burner, but make sure the wax sheet is not melted. Once it is done, you have to fold your wax sheet properly so that you don't have any kind of voids or air entrap between these two folds. So the same thing, the folds are made continuously to the complete of the sheet. So you have to soften it slowly onto the occlusal, onto the burner and then make the fold properly. As you can see, I am just trying to soften the wax but not melt the wax. And every fold you have to make sure that is there is no air and trap between these folds. Once the wax is completely folded like this, so the upper occlusal, the dincha base or the master cast is taken. The wax is folded down into a U-shaped frame according to the contour or shape of the ridge that is present on your master cast. And the wax is then nicely adapted to the denture base taking the shape of the crust or the ridge that is present on your master cast. So you will always have better time to mold your wax when it is softer rather than molding it after it has been set. So make sure that the shape of the wax is pre-made pre when it is softer enough, molded properly when it is softer enough to the proper shape of the model as you can see on the cast here. So once this is set there, The excess wax is nicely adapted to the denture base so that it gets firmly adhered to the denture base. From all the sides on the labial, buccal as well as in the palatal aspect. So you should make sure that you have a U-shaped framework from the lines that are drawn here on the both the labial surfaces that will tell you a U-shaped arch form to be maintained from the canine to the canine position. Take a wax knife, heat it properly and seal and secure your occlusal rim to the denture base by nicely softening the borders of the wax on all the sides. Just like the way I am doing on the cast now. both on the palatal side as well.
once it is secure, the rest of the shape of your occlusal rim is done by adding wax on both the sides and contouring it properly. So before we do the contouring, we need to know the proper measurements of your occlusal rim. So coming to your maxillary occlusal rim, the height of the occlusal rim should always be 22 mm in the anterior region, 18 mm in the posterior region. So now we have all doubt that from where this measurement has to be checked. Take a clean scale on which you can see all the markings on the scale. Measure it from the deepest portion of the cast in the anterior region. It would generally be near the position of the central incisors like this. From the border of the denture base, from the border of the denture base till the tip of your occlusal rim. Make sure you mark it at the level of your 22 mm. So take a carver and mark a line exactly at the 22 mm height. Coming to the posterior aspect, coming to the posterior aspect, take the scale again from the deepest part of the denture base flange as you see here, wherever you have the deepest part, from there you again take a scale and measure it to have it around 18 mm and mark a line that is present at 18 mm. So do the same thing on both the sides. Once this marking is done, first try to reduce the height of it to the marking where you have done there. So you need a flat and a neat hot plate that will help you to evenly reduce the whole complete surface of the occlusion. So take a rubber ball of water so that the wax is not spilled onto your surroundings. Heat the hot plate evenly and properly. Hold your hot plate horizontally towards your occlusal rim and make sure you are trying to reduce it exactly to those markings that you have done. But make sure initially when you are making that reduction, try to put a little higher, a 2 mm difference between the marking that you have done and the up current occlusal rim level. So that final corrections can be done at the end. So this is how you reduce the height of it. So by doing so, you are trying to save time to add the additional wax on the surfaces on the labial as well as the buccal surface. Two ways can be done to use to add this additional wax. One is that you can cut down small pieces of the wax that is left over from the wax sheet used for the occlusal rim. Put them on the surfaces here and then with the help of your wax knife nicely melt it down so that it gets adhered to your wax that is already present on your denture base. Try to dip it in some water so that it can solidify properly.
remove any excess wax that is flown into the tissue surface of the danger so that there will be no interference of seating this danger base back onto your master cast. So this is how as you can see a wax is additionally added onto the surface. The second method is that by rolling down the excess wax into a small tube like thing and then adding the wax properly onto the occlusal rim drop by drop just soft coat heat it a little and then add it drop by drop so you can use any of the technique with which you are comfortable with so the wax is heated down nicely added onto the occlusal rim by drop by drop till you get the proper contour as you required for the occlusal rim. So as it is added, you can again dip it into the cold water so that it solidifies properly. So as you could see here, wax is added on all the surfaces, on the buccal surface, the labial surface on both the sides and as well on the palatal surface. So once the wax is added, the wax knife is used to contour it properly. So take a wax knife, heat it properly, put a rubber ball nearby. After you heat your wax knife properly, contour the wax so that you have a smooth surface like this. Smooth flat surface without no elevations or depression that could be present on the occlusal rim. So to all the surfaces extend it like this and make sure that you don't have any depressions or elevations as you can see here. Once the labial surface is properly smoothened or the buccal surface is properly smoothened, use the other side of the wax knife where you have a small bend like this to contour the palatal surface. So take the wax knife and run across the palatal surface again to get a smoother and neat borders. Excess wax is poured down, smooth borders as you see, as you see here, so, so the contour of the wax knife will exactly be the contour of your palatal surface. So any minimal amounts of excess wax can be carved out with using a carver. Even the labial surface can be nicely carved if there is any excess amount of wax that is flown onto the flanges. Once it is done, now come back to your measurements that we have done it earlier where the anterior height should always be 22 mm. So mark a mark, put a mark on your occlusal rim now. 
as 22 mm line there coming to the posterior part which I have already told you you have to make your measurement from the deepest part of the denture flange. So a mark again 18. both the surfaces once these lines are drawn try to have a straight line attaching all these markings that are made on the occlusal rim so that which will give you a good clearance line till where your occlusal height or the occlusal rim level should be reduced to extend it like this as you see a line that is drawn meeting all those markings that are done on the cars using your scale for the proper measurements. Once this line is marked, you take your hot plate, heat it homogeneously, and now reduce the height to the required line that is drawn on your occlusal rim. And put it your eye level so that you could see how your occlusal rim is flatter enough. So if you have any air voids like this, you can use your wax knife to nicely heat it down and fill up those air voids. If those are bigger enough, you have to add a little wax in it. The smaller enough, just try to seal it up. Fill it up like that so that you don't have any voids there in your occlusal rim. So now the occlusal rim have got its shape. You can put it back onto your cast and see if these these refluent lines that are drawn here are matching with your occlusion. So before we go into this checking, another point which you have to remember is that till where the occlusal rim have to end on your denture base. You can extend it till here part, this part, till this or till the posterior most limit. But we have again a reference point on the cast that will help you to determine the posterior extension of your occlusal rim. So that part is that there is a line drawn from the hamular notch, the distal most extension on the occlusal rim. One centimeter from this hamular notch, a mark is pointed onto your cast and that is extended onto your land area on either sides. So that will give you the posterior most extension of your denture base. So once you seat back your denture base with the occlusal rim onto it, you should make sure that your occlusal rim is till the mark. If there is not there, you can add it, extend it till there. That will tell you the posterior most limit of your occlusal rim. And again, the contour of the occlusal rim should have the same as followed by your cast also. The contour of the cast that is shown here should also be present on your occlusal rim. So before going into the final uh, completion of your occlusal rim, there are few points that you have to remember is that if you see from the side, you can see a mild inclination in the anterior and you keep, if you see from here, the occlusal rim is inclined toward the ridge. So this is the form that you have to maintain. So there should be at least 10 to 15 degrees of angulation in the anterior region that is extended from the canine to the other side of the canine. But whereas coming to the posterior aspect, the occlusal rim both on the palatal side and the buccal side should always be contoured 
toward or inclined towards the crest of the ridge on both the sides. There should not be a proper U shape here, but rather the posterior teeth, the posterior oculum should always be straight on both the sides, and you have a U shaped contour that is present in the canine region. So, once all, all the contouring is completed, this is how your oculum looks like. If you can see, all the surfaces move parallel, nice straight both on the labial side, the buccal side, as well as on the palatal side. And if you could see, there is no excess wax any on the surface of, anywhere on the surface of your tincture base on both the sides as well. So once it is done, you can take a nice gauze piece, run across your finger and smoothen the surface by rubbing a gauze piece toward the surface so that any small uneven surfaces that could be present can be nicely removed with this gauze piece. Okay. So once all the wax is contoured nicely, you can see the wax surfaces on the denture base, smooth, straight, no any uh, bulkiness or no excess wax present on all the surfaces and on the palatal surface also. And if you can observe, there is no excess wax on the surface of anywhere of the denture as well as on the tissue surface of the denture. So once this contouring is done, you can take a gauze piece like this, wrap around your finger and nicely rub across the, along the sides of your occlusal rim so that you will have to eliminate any small interferences or elevation that are present so that your whole of your occlusal rim would be smoother in. So all surfaces, the occlusal surface, every surface of the occlusal rim is nicely rubbed with your gauze piece so that you have a smoother surface. And there should be no excess wax beyond the thickness of the denture base as you can see here. The wax should always merge down with the denture base both on the labial surface, the buccal surface as well as on the palatal surface as well. So once you put this back onto your cast, onto which the markings are made and if you can observe the U-shaped nature of the occlusal rim is exactly from the canine to canine marking that are done on the cast. At the same time and if you see the posterior part, it is exactly to the line that is drawn from the hamlar knot, the 1 cm line that is drawn from the hamlar knot, exactly there. The posterior most extension of your, day, of your occlusal rim is always in a nice good slope merging down with the posterior part of the denture base and as you see in the anterior region there is a mild inclination that is seen here. So this is how the contour has to be maintained and if you see in this view the part the surfaces on the buccal surface of the occlusal rim as well as on the palatal surfaces of the occlusal rim are all inclined towards each other. So till now we have been talking about the height of the ridge, the height of the occlusal rim which we have been checking down. So if you could see here, the height of the occlusal rim in the anterior part of the area is about 22 mm. Coming to the posterior part, if you see it, it is about 18 mm of height. So all this is about the height of the denture of the occlusal rim over your denture base. Now coming to the width of the denture occlusal rim, in the anterior region it is supposed to be around 6 to 8 mm of width in the anterior region. When you come to the posterior region, it is supposed to be around 10, 8 to 10 mm on the width. So once this is done, the occlusal rim is finally fabricated with no voids anywhere on your occlusal rim. So after this is done, you can nicely polish your occlusal rim with the using a chip lower. So hold your occlusal rim at a distance away, of a little distance away and try to blow the fire onto your surfaces of your occlusal rim, the surface whichever side you want to polish. 
but make sure the wax is not melted down. So now take the cotton, dip the octahedral rim and wet the cotton and rub against it nicely so that you have a polished surface. It is better that you use some cold water to get a good polishing on the surface of the occlusal. So as you could see here, the difference between a pol polished surface and an unpolished surface, the glaze, the glaze that you can see on both the sides, the surface here and so. So the whole surface is the, the palatal surface, the labial surface, the buccal surface and the occlusal surface should be polished nicely. So the tape technique is used on all the surfaces by blowing the fire with the using a chip blower. But make sure that you don't melt the wax and destroy the shape or contour of your occlusal rim. Take a wet cotton, wipe it across again. The same thing will again be followed onto the palatal surface. Take a wet cotton again, wipe it across the palatal surface. If you have any excess wax that is present on the palatal surface here, you can again do the same thing but use a dry cotton to wipe it out rather than a wet cotton. So this is how a final occlusal rim looks like.